Hey guys, welcome back to Algos Explained. My name is David and today we have a video, another very easy question. I have been asked by my viewers to go a little bit more in depth on these questions and so I will first start off with going in depth on the easier questions and then um, maybe we can work towards getting in depth on the harder ones. But uh, I thought that this one was a nice question that we have for us today because it goes, uh, uh, it talks about a data structure and of course it does the algorithm portion of it as well. So um, if you don't know this question yet, if you haven't tried it, if this is the first time you're tuning in and uh, you're like, what is this about? Maybe can I solve this without? Uh, David explaining it, go ahead and go to my link in the description and click on it. Try it out. I don't think you need to make an account to try out the question, but um, if you want to make an account, there is a link for that. If you want to just try out the question, there's a link for that as well. So um, go ahead and try it out. And uh, if you don't solve it as fast as the length of this video, uh, which is me explaining it and solving it, uh, make sure you come and back and watch it if you haven't to kind of see what I did versus what you decided to do and kind of the thought processes. I think the most value this channel has is me explaining to you what my thought process is uh, and dissecting how I'm reading the question. <clears throat> All right, so without further ado, the question today is return the first element in an array. And so we know that we're gonna be working with the data structure array. We're gonna be working in JavaScript again. Uh, as you can see here, you can do different languages. I like to do in JavaScript. I like to do my coding interviews in JavaScript as well. So we're gonna go with that. All right, create a function that takes an array containing only numbers and return the first element. I like how vague this is, honestly, because when you're in an interview situation, they're gonna be very vague and uh, it's up to you to ask more questions. Things like, <clears throat> are there special rules around this? What are the inputs gonna be looking like? How many inputs are we gonna have? Are, are all your answers kind of standard? Like if they say, we're gonna have one input, ask them, can there be two or will we always be guaranteed just one input? Those kind of clarifying questions don't always result in you having to code more, but it does demonstrate that you are thinking about that kind of stuff and therefore um, the interviewers like to hear that kind of stuff. Here are some examples get first value and we see that they gave us one array and it's of numbers um, like how they said create a function that takes an array containing only numbers okay uh, get first value uh, they have another array of three numbers and to get first value another array of three numbers and so we can tell by the second one that it doesn't have to be in numerical order um, and by the last example that there can be negative numbers. Um, create a function that takes an array containing only numbers. One thing that I'm noticing in the examples is that all of these arrays have a length of three. They have three elements inside of them, but in the description of the question, it doesn't say anything about how many elements the array will have. And so that is another question you can ask the interviewer. Um, how long is this array gonna be and does it matter? Um, Maybe for kind of, if the array is going to be stupid long, maybe that's gonna matter, but for the purposes of this question and how we're going to solve it, it eventually doesn't really matter. Um, because we don't need to work with the length of the array itself in order to get to the answer of this question. And so, let's see. Another question I would ask the interviewer would be, so we're supposed to create a function that takes only numbers, but is that what we're going to be given? And so kind of, if I'm supposed to create a function that takes only numbers, I think that kind of makes it so that it's my responsibility to make sure that if I'm given something that's not numbers, I react to it appropriately. Um, and so that could be one way to look at it. Another way can be simply, the interviewer might say, nope, we're only going to give you numbers, therefore, you know, just make a function that works with the input that you are guaranteed to have. <clears throat> and so that is that. Let's see, notes here, the first element in the array always has an index of zero. And so that is a huge hint, not just the note. Um, and so with that said, we know what we want to do. We know that we're going to be given an array. We know that we are going to have to return the first element of it. Uh, whether or not we have to make sure that it's a number or not, I'm not quite sure if that's our responsibility. Um, that is a question that needs to be answered. 
and that's about it. And we know that we're going to return it. This is a function that actually returns something, not just a side effect function. And so, you know that question I asked about, do, is it our responsibility to handle non-numbers? We can go ahead and look at the tests here. And if these tests here said, uh, if these had like a non-numerical value, and the answer that we're supposed to give it once given that is like a false or something, then these tests will show it. But given these tests, every single element here is numbers, our numbers. And so we don't have to worry about any of that kind of stuff. So my assumption is that the answer to that question, do we have to handle non-numerical values? The answer would be no. So let's go ahead and go to the coding portion of this question. And I forgot to warn you guys, if you're already here, then you already watched it, but I will have timestamps in this video, so watch out for those as well. If I didn't add timestamps, I think the last video I uploaded it, and then I added timestamps later. And if you noticed it before me, then go ahead and comment. I will add them ASAP. All right, so the parameter here is R array. That's the uh, standing for array. And one way we know how to, um, let's go back to this note. Index of zero, this is a huge hint. When we want to look at a value of the array, we want to look at the, or if we want to look at the value of an array uh, based on its position, we use a, something called index. And so in what I'm saying is, okay, my keyboard, okay, there we go. All right, so the color of this is really bad. Um, hopefully you guys can see it. One, two, three, four, five. I just made that array. And so if you want to look at the first number, how do we tap into that element? With arrays, we tap into it by indexing into it. And the way indexes work is uh, actually they start with zero. And so this first one is going to be a one for us. And array of two or array of one first index is going to be the value of two. And so that, this is kind of the format of how we're going to index into the array. This is the array, our input, right? That's the data structure. And if we want to look into that data structure, because the data structure is kind of a structure that holds onto our data, right? Um, if we want to look into that data structure to kind of pull the values we want, we're going to index into it. And to index into it, we got to follow the rules of, well, who's first, who's second? How do we know that? Well, we know that by going from 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and like that. So let's go ahead and uh, return r. And then let me go ahead and do 1. We know that this is not the right answer. We, it might look like the answer because we want the first value, 1, but that is actually not what we want. If we, we have the test here already, so when we run it, of the value one, two, three, or of the array one, two, three. If we do array of one, and this is what it looks like to index into the array data structure, that's actually gonna give me the second number in there because this is the index of one. The first value is actually at the index of zero. That's just how it works. And so let's go ahead and check it. We're gonna assume everything's gonna fail because we indexed into it incorrectly. Only way this might work is if the first and second uh, value were the same, and none of them were the same. So uh, expected one instead got two. Well, let's look at this test. Yep, of the array one, two, three, we wanted one, and we could tell because of this uh, test here, we got two instead, right? And that's because we use index of one instead of index of zero. Index of zero gets me the first value, index of one gets me the second value, uh, so far, and, and then on and on. Uh, and we can tell, let's just look at the last one. We wanted this negative number here, but we probably got zero instead. Let's go to the console. Yep, we wanted the big negative, but we got zero instead. And so let's go ahead and just um, go to index of zero. That's how we're going to solve the question. And let's go ahead and check it. This is how you properly index into an array. All right, it is checking. And while it's checking, if you enjoyed this video, uh, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Um, I always love to just 
form my newer videos off of people's feedbacks and kind of what my viewers want. Um, I am working with the platform Edibit because they are, I'm part of their affiliate program, meaning if you click on the links in below, go to use those links to open up questions, make an account, and eventually if you become a paying member, a pro member, uh, then I get some benefit to that. And so this all worked out uh, like we expected. Index of zero is where the numerical start happens. And so like uh, just, just reviewing, looking at an array data structure, going from the first value is at the index of zero. And this array with this bracket and number and bracket, that's kind of, that's what it looks like to index into this data structure. All right, let's go ahead and submit final. And that is going to be it for this question. Um, so I'm originally trying to upload on Saturday nights, like kind of midnight going into Sunday. I couldn't upload it uh, because Saturday I was just really busy. But um, hopefully next week I can get back on that schedule. And uh, so yeah, if you like this uh, video and if it was useful to you, be sure to give it a thumbs up. And go ahead and look at my other playlist to see other videos. Hopefully, maybe they'll be useful to you. If anything, click on the video, solve the questions yourself. And if you couldn't solve it in the time or if you got stuck or anything, just come back to my videos. Um, thank you for your time and have a good one. Bye.